Good morning. Breaking overnight, fire and fury. A sixth night of mayhem and mass protests over the death of George Floyd one week ago. In Louisville, one man killed in a shooting between police and protesters near the White House, anger at a boil. And in Minneapolis, this shocking scene, a tractor trailer plowing through a crowd of peaceful demonstrators. The now activated in 21 states. This morning, we're live across the country listening to demonstrators. We don't have to retaliate with anger. We retaliate with love. And at a dark hour for the nation, some signs of hope. I took the helmet off and laid the batons down. I want to make this a parade, not a protest. This morning, the efforts across the country to find peace and the worries about what mass protests mean in the fight against the pandemic Today, Monday, June 1st, 2020. From NBC News, this is a special edition of Today, America in Crisis. With Savannah Guthrie, live from New York City. And Hoda Kotb, live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza. And good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. It's nice to have you with us on a Monday morning. We're glad you're with us. Hoda back in the studio. And I'm here in New York City, just a few miles south of where you are in Union Square, Hoda. Normally, at this time of the morning, this would be a busy, crowded place. It's quiet now because of the pandemic and a lot more quiet than it was even as recently as a few hours ago. This has really been the center of protests here in New York City, here and in Brooklyn. Ever since the death of George Floyd at the hands of police officers in Minneapolis, you're seeing some of the images of the mayhem that went on last night and over the weekend here and all around New York City. And this scene is being repeated, of course, across the country. Protests just like those have erupted in at least 140 cities from coast to coast. Some of those protests did turn violent, and that has prompted officials in at least 21 states to activate the National Guard, Hoda. Overnight, also, Derek Chauvin, the fired Minneapolis police officer charged with murder in the death of George Floyd, was moved to a new detention facility. He was scheduled to make his first court appearance today, but that now has been pushed to next Monday, Savannah. And meanwhile, Hoda, the president is set to hold a conference call on safety today with the nation's governors and security officials. We have complete coverage for you this morning. Craig is with us. He's in Washington, D.C. this morning, and he will get our coverage started. Craig, good morning to you. Savannah Hoda, good morning uh, to both of you. We are in Lafayette Park. We are, as you can see behind me, just steps away from the White House. This is the same spot where I stood last night uh, as violence erupted, as chaos erupted. Flashbangs used throughout the night, rubber bullets used throughout the night. Also last night, shortly before 11 o'clock, the lights went dark uh, here at the White House. Those lights used to uh, usually illuminate the outside of the people's house. They went off. I'm going to step over and show you also what's still happening. Fires around Washington, D.C. You can see the top of this small building, bathrooms, small offices here. Uh, that fire just started back up literally three minutes ago as you see officials working to put that blade on. In fact, here comes a fire truck. Behind this fire truck, this is St. John. The church of presidents because every president, uh, with the exception, I believe, of James Monroe, uh, has worshipped at some point at this church, riddled with graffiti right now. A fire was started in the basement on Sunday night as the sun came up. Uh, city workers came out to clean off the graffiti uh, and try and clean up that church. And meanwhile, across the street from that church, this is a building that actually has significance uh, to me and my family. This is the Hay Adams Hotel. This is actually where I had my, my wedding reception, riddled with the graffiti, hotels boarded up, and this is the case for businesses in and around New York, in and around Washington, D.C., looting in Georgetown, not far from here throughout the night. Those protests that started last week, those protests that were largely peaceful in the wake of George Floyd's death, have turned into something else entirely. We're in an economic crisis. And what you're seeing here is a manifestation of all of that. 
overnight unrest across America. The death of George Floyd in police custody, sparking new protests nationwide. Here in the nation's capital, violence taking place just steps from the White House. You can see that fire uh, that's been set uh, just in front of the White House outside Lafayette Park. In an extraordinary step, U.S. Marshals and DEA agents were deployed to help keep the peace. It comes as NBC News has confirmed the Secret Service was so concerned about President Trump's safety during protests on Friday, they ushered him to a bunker underneath the White House for a very short period of time. More than 100 protests and rallies taking place in cities from coast to coast. In more than a dozen states, the National Guard was called in to help restore order. In Louisville overnight, a man was shot and killed after shots were fired toward the police officers and National Guard members during protests. The chief of police saying officers and soldiers returned fire. The identity of the man who was shot has not been released. In Tampa, smoke and ash filling the sky as businesses burn. Authorities shooting off tear gas. Cars like this police cruiser in Boston incinerated. While looters storm shops, including the small in Arizona. In New York City, this video of two NYPD vehicles ramming into a crowd of protesters, sparking outrage. The mayor defending the officers involved. I also want to emphasize that situation was created by a group of protesters blocking and surrounding a police vehicle. On Saturday night, Mayor Bill de Blasio's own daughter arrested during citywide protests, according to a senior NYPD official. In an effort to clear the streets, dozens of cities, including Minneapolis, put curfews in place over the weekend. We cannot afford to lose anyone else. We don't want any more innocent bystanders getting hurt. Please stay home. Chicago's mayor echoing what so many are feeling. We have to turn our pain into purpose in order to get through this moment together and do the work needed to unite our city. The protests were not all violent, though. In Denver, thousands laid on the ground for nine minutes, chanting, I can't breathe. This is what America's built While in on. Iowa, yes. hundreds marched to make their point. We feel it's time for us to stand up and show the nation Show, show the world, even at that with social media, that we can come together in a peaceful manner and state how we feel. You tell us what you need to do. The sheriff in Michigan marching arm in arm with his community. But it was on the streets of Washington, D.C., among the chaos, that I found a father trying to teach his son about peace. We don't have to retaliate with anger. We retaliate with love. That's why we're down here. But it's always another way. So that's all I want them to see. A poignant moment as a nation tries so hard to move forward.